Yes, guys, turn to the 28th question. The following is summarized balance sheet of H Limited and S Limited as on 31st March. There's a balance sheet which is given to you. And on the asset side for H Limited, investment in S Limited 60,000 shares purchased at 6 lakhs. All rupees are in lakhs. H already holds 60% of the paid up share capital of S, balance being held by foreign company. The foreign company agreed with the H Limited as under. The shares of the foreign company will be sold to H Limited at 50 rupees above the nominal value per share. Nominal value is 10. 50 rupees above nominal value is 60 rupees. The actual cost per share to the foreign company is 11. And all the gains arising to the foreign company are taxable at 20%. Tax payable will be deducted from the sale proceeds paid to the government by H Limited. 50% of their consideration after payment of tax will be remitted to the foreign company that is cash and also any cash for fraction shares and for the balance consideration 50% paid in cash for the balance 50% they will issue shares at their intrinsic value so H Limited's intrinsic value should be calculated here it was decided that H Limited will absorb S Limited simultaneously by writing down the fixed assets of S Limited at 10% and the balance sheet figure included a sum of 1 lakh due from S to H and also included a stock 1.5 lakhs purchased from S Limited who sold them at cost plus 20%. Pass journal entries in the books of H to record the above arrangement and prepare a balance sheet on for H Limited after the absorption of S Limited all workings being part of your answer. Guys, we have to issue shares at the intrinsic value of H. So first, let's try to calculate intrinsic value of H. Intrinsic value per share in H Limited. Guys, to get H Limited's investments, investments are 60,000 shares in S. To value these investments, we need value of S, which will normally calculate by intrinsic value method. But here, I don't need intrinsic value method because each share in S valuation, I already know. The shares held by the foreign company will be sold to H Limited at 50% above nominal value. That means 60 rupees per share is the value per share in S. I can directly apply that value for that 60,000 shares. I don't have to calculate again what is the intrinsic value. All rupees in lakhs. Start with your assets. Fixed assets, investments in S Limited, 60,000 shares, each share valued at 60 rupees. First point, 50 rupees above nominal value, value per share of S Limited is 60 rupees, 36. Data 35. Inventory is 30, cash and bank 39, total assets are 200, deduct outside liabilities from this. Current liability is 30. Secured loan 20. Outside liabilities are 50. Net assets are 150. These can be called as net assets available to equity shareholders with the simple reason that there is no preference shares. So your net assets should be equal to net assets available to equity shareholders divided by the number of equity shares will get what is the intrinsic value per share. 
number of equity shares in H Limited is 5 lakhs. So value per share in H Limited each share in H Limited is valued at 30 rupees. So this is the issue price per share in H for 50% of the net consideration payable to the foreign company after paying tax. First payment of tax, then the balance consideration 50% in cash and out of the remaining 50, I have to issue shares at 30 rupees. So continue with the PC. Purchase consideration again rupees in lakhs. Start with number of shares held by foreign company. That's right, everything in lakhs only, guys. How many shares does H holds? 60,000 shares. So how many will the foreign company hold? 40% or 0.4 lakh shares. My value per share, read the point number 1. Value per share in S. The shares held by the foreign company will be sold to H at 50% above the nominal price, 60 rupees. Multiply these two, we get PC to foreign company. I'll have to pay a PC of 24 to M. How will I pay the PC? Read that point number 2. The actual cost per share to the foreign company is 11 and gains arising will be taxable at 20. Tax will be deducted from the sale proceeds and paid to the government by holding company H Limited itself. 50% of the consideration after payment of tax will be remitted to the foreign company and for the balance consideration they will issue shares at their intrinsic value and any fraction shares will also be settled in cash. So less cost. Cost of investments. Acquired at 11 rupees, so 60,000 shares into 11, 6.6, 6, I'm writing in lakhs. Oh, I'm sorry, 40,000, right? 40,000 shares into 11, 4.4. 4. Taxable profits. Nineteen point six. And tax on gains, 20% tax, 3.92. Net proceeds, C minus F. I need to pay him 24. 3.92 I'll have to pay to government. The balance 20.08 should be paid to foreign company. Net proceeds. 24 minus 3.92. 3.92 will be remitted to government. This is cash payment. Now, out of this, net proceeds settled in cash. Fifty percent, ten point four zero four. Net proceed settled in shares of H. It should be same ten point zero four. Fifty percent paid in cash, fifty percent settled by way of issue of shares in H Limited. Now. At what rate am I issuing? Read that point number 3. The balance consideration to H Limited will be issued at their intrinsic value. 
for first working note had my intrinsic value you can use that issue price per share in h30 number of shares to be issued give me the value in lakhs 0 point some change i think 334 i think this is 0 0.3344 anyways i have to take fraction shares Anyways, taking in lakh space, I'll take up to 66 and 0 0.0000067 is a fraction component. Try to reduce the fractions here. We can't write so many fractions also. Oh, prepare a discharge of PC. First one, PC in cash. How many times did he pay cash? First payment in cash is tax to government. Three point nine two. Next one, fifty percent of net proceeds. Ten point zero four. Finally, for fraction shares, zero point zero 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 six seven into thirty issue price. I think it is 0 0.02, 0 0.02 or double zero two. Zero point zero two. Then PC in equity shares. Equity share capital. I'm issuing him 0.334 shares. Each share is 10 rupees. So 3.34. My security is premium component. 0 0.334 into 20. Each share is issued at 30. 10 rupees share capital. So this is 6.68. My total PC should total up to 24 again. The total PC we already calculated it as 24. So when you total your discharge it should be equal to 24 again. Now read the paragraph after those three points. It was also decided that H limited will also absorb S limited simultaneously by writing down the fixed assets by 10% and the balance sheet figure included a sum of 1 lakh due from S to H. So that is a cancellation of debtors and current liabilities. Included in stock is 1.5 lakhs purchased from S who sold them at cost plus 20%. Cost plus 20% is 
one sixth on selling price, one fifth on cost, one sixth on selling price, one sixth of one point five, one sixth of one point five is zero point two five. So that should be added to goodwill anyway. So let's see nature of amalgamation since there is revaluations. We'll call it as purchase. Method of accounting. Purchase method. Yes guys, what is he asking you? Pass journal entries in the books of H to record the above arrangement on 31st March. So let's pass journal entries in the books of H. Guys, I have rounded off this one. If you can... Expanded actually it's in lags. So I get three three four six six and this will be zero point five zeros and then six seven. It's okay. Way too many points. I have just rounded off to two two decimals so that we get it. Guys, when journal entries are asked, you don't have to calculate goodwill or capital reserve. Automatically you'll get the goodwill in the journal entry. First entry is PC due. Purchase consideration due. Business purchase account debit. 24 PC. To liquidator of S24 Net assets taken over There's an adjustment to the fixed assets They should write down the fixed assets by 10% Take over the fixed assets 
fixed assets account debit 18 minus 1.8 is 16.2 debtors no adjustment take them at full values we'll cancel the debtors of intercompany owings later on after we take over the adjustment will be inventories 25 cash 2 to current liabilities 2 to secured loans 3 Cancel your investments, investments in S, I purchased it at 6, to business purchase, uh, this is the purchase consideration which you paid now, 24, check for goodwill or capital reserve, I think you should get a capital reserve here. You don't have to maintain the goodwill or capital reserve again guys. Once you pass the journal entry, automatically your balancing figure of the journal entry is the capital reserve. Go for settlement of PC. Liquidator of S account debit 24. To cash. How much cash keep totaling this three? Thirteen point nine eight. To equity share capital three point three four. To securities premium. 6.68 Next I have to cancel the intercompany owings Check what is the intercompany owings Balance sheet figure included 1 lakh due There is no credit as guys There is only current liabilities So let me debit that Normally it should be creditors to debtors, but since there is no creditor account, I am debiting current liabilities account. But I have a debtors on the asset side, so I am reducing it by 1. Last transaction is unrealized profit on stock. H limited stock included 1.5 lakh goods which were purchased from S who sold them at 20% on cost, 1 fifth on cost, 1 sixth on selling price. So I have to reduce it. I'll record an entry as capital reserve to stock. We have seen such entries at the beginning, introduction of the chapter. Capital reserve account debit to stock. 1 by 6 into 1.5 that is it for the journal entries once you are done with the journal entries go for the balance sheet Balance sheet of H Limited after merger with S.
balance sheet of H as on 31st March 2012 after absorption of S Limited. equity and liabilities already existing share capital being 50 now additional shares check your discharge 3.34 so become 53.34 Reserves and surplus. Securities premium 6.68. Capital reserve. Check the capital reserve. When the net assets were taken over, it was 13.2, reduced by 0.25 for unrealized profit. So this will become 12.95. Other two reserves as it is from the balance sheet pickup, general reserve is 50 and P&L is 20. Non-current liabilities, secured loans, 23. Current liabilities 31 because I reduce one from intercompany owings. Assets non current assets. Tangible fixed assets, H limited at 60, he took over from the other companies 16.2, so this will become 76.2. Investments gone cancel, balance should only be the current assets there, debtors reduced by 1, this is 39. Inventory reduced by 0 0.25, 64.75 and finally cash and bank reduced by Balance sheet total is 
Yes, guys, question number 29. Following is a summarized balance sheet of CAT and BAT as on 31st March 2012. This will involve internal reconstruction as well. Read carefully. There's some equity share capital given, some reserves come down to the asset side. Yes, investments in CAT Limited include investments in BAT. And there's also a proposed dividend existing in CAT Limited's balance sheet. BAT Limited acquired the business of CAT. The following scheme of merger was approved. Bank will waive off a loan of 60,000 of BAT Limited. BAT Limited will reduce its shares to 10 rupees each and then consolidate 10 such shares into one share of 100 rupees each. Shareholders of CAT will be given one share of BAT in exchange of every share in CAT. Proposed dividend of CAT Limited will be paid after merger to the shareholders of CAT Limited only. Creditors of BAT include 100,000 payable to CAT and CAT will also cancel 20% of the holding in BAT as investments which it held at a cost of 250. Guys, the entire 700 is not investments in BAT. It's clearly saying they were held at a cost of 250. So out of 700, 250 is only investments in BAT. The balance 450 are some other investments. And he's saying that the holding is exactly 20%. Pass the necessary journal entries in BAD and also prepare the balance sheet after merger. So we are, he's asking us BAT Limited's balance sheet guys. That is the acquiring company. They started with the uh, reconstruction process and then they went into the amalgamation. So let's start. Put down a heading, calculation of PC first. Let's calculate PC and then we'll go on with the problem. Multiple journal entries to be written for to complete the internal reconstruction as well as the amalgamation. PC to be calculated given in point number 3. Shareholders of CAT will be given one share of BAT in exchange of every share of CAT. So BAT is taking our CAT. That is there in the first sentence after the balance sheet. BAT Limited has acquired the business of CAT. So CAT is a selling company. BAT is a purchasing company. So we need to calculate the purchase consideration. Net payments method because the exchange ratio is given. Read, don't forget there's investments in BAD which is held by CAT. That means the selling company is holding investments in purchasing company. Now check first. Shareholders of CAD are given one share in BAT for every ever exchange of every share in BAD. So I'll start with number of shares in CAT. Number of shares in CAT, all rupees in thousands. Number of shares are 10 if I'm talking in thousands. 100 rupees share, 1000 rupees capital. I'm sorry, 20. Exchange ratio Read carefully the shareholders of CAT will be given one share in BAD for exchange of every share in CAT 1 is to 1 Number of shares to be allotted by BAD Twenty, but I will not allot the entire twenty shares. The reason is 
selling company shares, sorry, selling company holds already some shares in purchasing company. So I can reduce that less number of shares already held. by cat how many shares does cat hold in bad check investments is clearly given that cat limited will cancel 20% of holding guys if they had 20% holding what were the initial shares without considering the internal reconstruction process without considering internal reconstruction process check the balance sheet number of shares in bad limited what 10 because 1000 rupees share capital each share of 100 rupees, so I had 10. But check the internal reconstruction process. What happened from the point number two? They have reduced each share to 10 rupees. Actually, I had 10 shares of 100 rupees, that is 1000. But what did he do? So, 100 rupees share, I bought it down to 10. So, now I have 10 shares of 10 rupees each. Now they are saying, and then they consolidated 10 such share into one share of 100. I have 10 shares of 10 rupees. If I consolidate to a 100 rupee share, how many 100 rupee shares I have? 1. Exactly 100 rupee share is left out. Now out of that, 20% of the holding is, when, is was held by cat in bad. So 20% of 1. Zero point two. Net number of shares to be issued <coughs> by BAT is 19.8. Issue price per share. Any premium? Nothing given. So take it at face value. Guys, though I have reduced each share to 10 rupee face value, again I have consolidated. I will get back my 100 rupee share capital again. Each share, I am considering this at par. My net punches consideration, 1980. Whenever selling company holds shares in purchasing company, I will not have a hesitation in calling it as purchase because the investments of selling company can never be taken over by purchasing company because it is purchasing company shares only. So, he is asking us to pass a journal entry. So, first let me write the nature of amalgamation and then I will go for the entries. Nature of amalgamation purchase method of accounting purchase method. Guys, this point is the most important in this calculation. This part is the most important as far as the calculation was concerned. Because ignoring the internal reconstruction process, if you calculate 20%, you will not get 0.2, you will get 2. If you don't consider the internal reconstruction process, your deduction will be 2, your net number of shares to be issued will be 18, which is absolutely wrong. Come on guys, check for the Balance sheet. So first the journal entries. Journal entries in books of BAT. First go with the internal reconstruction process. First one. Bank agreed to waive off 60,000 of loan in BAT. So check loan from bank. Yes, there is a loan from bank. Debit that because it is being waived off. I am reducing the liability. I am debiting it.
credit should go to capital reduction account or internal reconstruction account. Anything is fine. Second one, each share will be reduced to 10 and then consolidated to form 100 rupee share. So, splitting it down to 10, that means the reduction per share is 90. Equity share capital account debit face value rupees 100. Debit the equity share capital first. Bat limited equity share capital was 1000. Capital reduction 900. Again, consolidation. Entry will be same, equity share capital to equity share capital. But the face values change. Ten rupee face value share is consolidated to get hundred rupee share. That's it. In the internal construction process, identify the total CR. Capital reduction 60, capital reduction 900. So my total capital reduction is 960. Utilize it to write off fictitious assets. BAT limited fictitious assets are Accumulated loss of 800. Asset side last item. Accumulated loss is PNL debit balance. Anything else to be written off? Check your asset side. Now there is a tangible asset. I can't write off that. Debtors can't be written off. Accumulated loss, the only fictitious asset. To capital reserve, the balance capital reduction transferred to the reserve. 160. With that we come to the end of reconstruction process. From here starts amalgamation with CAT Limited. So CAT Limited's PC what I am paying is 1980. I will start with that. First entry for PC due. Business purchase account debit 1980 to liquidator of cat. Entry for net assets taken over. Take over one by one, line by line. First one, <coughs> tangible fixed assets, two seven double zero, investment seven hundred minus two fifty, four fifty, debtors. Four hundred bank balance two fifty. Understand your credits now. He is taking over in proposed dividend this liability as well. Proposed dividend is two hundred taken over. Creditors of 300, uh, 
We'll continue the credits. To bank loan 250. To 10% debentures. Five hundred business purchase nineteen eighty. Guys, these investments entire seven hundred can't be taken as investments in, but he clearly said twenty percent holding was acquired at two fifty, while the total investments was seven hundred. So the balance other investments are four fifty. So once you post the business purchase, the balance figure of the entry should be goodwill or capital reserve. I think there is a capital reserve again. Minus three thousand two thirty five seventy. And there is five seventy. There is three eight double zero, there is three two three zero. Discharge the PC. Once again, guys, there are some other transactions as well. Yeah, we have to consider that as well. First, like, first discharge. Liquidator of ba sorry, cat limited account debit 1980 discharge it to equity share capital. Entire thing is at face value, no securities premium, no other mode. Equity share capital is five 1980. There are a few other transactions as well. Read point number 4, 5 and 6. Sorry, 4 and 5. 4. Proposed dividend will be paid after merger. I have taken over proposed dividend. Now discharge that. Proposed dividend to bank. Two hundred. Last one, fifth point, creditors and debtors should be cancelled for 100. Creditors account debit. To debtors. Sufficient enough information. All the entries are passed. You can go for the balance sheet.
balance sheet of BAT, 21st March 2012, equity and liabilities, shareholder funds share capital only equity after internal construction i had 100 plus now i issued equity share capital to the liquidators of 1980 total is 2080 reserves and surplus only one reserve what is capital reserve? Two capital reserves are there. Add both. One capital reserve on internal reconstruction, 160. One capital, uh, capital, sorry, capital reserve of 570 on takeover. Total is 730. Non-current liabilities. Ten percent debentures, five hundred loan from bank. Sixty has been waived off, six forty. Current liabilities. Bank OD. Guys, bank OD, we can set it against bank. Is there sufficient bank balance? No. There's no sufficient bank balance. Keep the bank OD intact. Because I'm paying a proposed dividend. How much proposed dividend has been paid off? 200. Bank balance of 200 is available. I think we can write off. Check guys, bank is 250. I have an OD balance of 50. If I net it off, I'll have a balance of 200. And the 200 has been utilized for capital uh, proposed dividend. There's no other bank transaction which will appear. Let's leave it there. Creditors, we have to reduce it by intercompany owings. 100. So creditors is 500. Proposed dividend already paid off. Assets non current assets tangible fixed assets three five five zero other non current assets. Investments, only 250 rupees investments are not taken over, balance 450 are taken over. Current assets. Debtors cancel by 100, 450. Bank balance. Oh, I'm sorry, there's no bank actually. I've repaid everything. 
Yes, guys. So in the given problem, basically, if you check your investments, my investments, I have 6,000 shares in Y and 5,000 shares in X. Have you seen that? That is the intercompany owings with, uh, holdings which are given to you. And very clearly coming down there, first he has given some transactions first. Fixed assets of both the companies should be revalued. Both the companies, underline that. Very, very important adjustment which comes up there. Fixed assets of both the companies are revalued at 15% above the book values. Stock and data only for the purpose of takeover is 5% less than the book value. They are paying 10% equity dividend, preference dividend already being paid off. So we have to pay the equity dividend. Now, if you check the transactions, X will absorb Y. 8 shares of 10 rupees each will be issued by X against 6 shares of Y limited. What is this? Exchange ratio should be 8 shares for every 6 shares. So or I can say it is 4 is to 3. So anything is fine. 8 is to 6 or 4 is to 3. So an exchange ratio is given. We follow net payments method. 10% preference shares on Y limited will be paid off at 10% discount. By issue of 10% preference shares at a at par in X limited. So let's start. Get the PC, follow net asset, sorry, cause follow net payments method. Use the intercompany holdings. There are intercompany holdings in the question. We need to use that. Both selling and purchasing as well as purchasing and selling. Start with PC to equity shareholders. <clears throat> that is the first point given. Number of equity shares. In Y. X is taking over Y. How many shares are there in Y? The 3 lakh share capital, each share of 10 rupees, 30,000 shares in Y. What is my exchange ratio he has given? Read the point. 8 shares of 10 rupees each will be issued by X at par against 6 shares in Y, 8 by 6. Or number of shares to be issued by X limited into 8 by 6 I just basically get 40,000 but now I have to give the impact of intercompany holdings first always cancel purchasing and selling so that we get PC to outside shareholders purchasing and selling less percentage holding of X in Y. How many shares are held by X in Y? 6,000 shares. Out of total how many shares? 30,000 shares. 6,000 out of 30,000. Twenty percent. 8,000 reduce. Balance is number of shares to be issued to outside shareholders. Outside holders, 32,000. Why issuing 32 when he already has 5,000 shares in X? Less. Shares already held. By Y. 
5000 net number of shares we should Twenty-seven thousand issue price per share. Very clearly, he said par ten. Now my PC to equity shareholders two lakh seventy thousand. First, the number of shares using the exchange ratio. Out of this, 20% are held by purchasing company itself. So, if I pay the entire 40,000 shares, 8,000 shares will be received back by purchasing company. What is the point of issuing shares and receiving back? Deduct that. And 32,000 should be issued to the outside holders, of which again 5,000 shares they already hold. I will not take over these investments. So, balance shares are 27,000. PC to preference shareholders. Read the next point and fill it up. Ten percent preference shares of Y Limited will be paid off at ten percent discount by issue of ten percent preference shares in X at par. So start with ten percent preference share capital of Y Limited. How much is ten percent preference share capital in Y? 1 lakh. Very clearly he is saying they are paid off at a discount. So let's discount 10% discount 10,000. This is my PC to preference shareholders and these are issued in the form of 10% preference shares in X at par issue price per share in X limited is equal to 100 number of 10% preference shares to be issued by X 900 Identify discharge debenture holders in a similar fashion. Let's first write out the discharge first, discharge of PC. Easy discharge guys. PC to equity shareholders. Entire shares are issued at par. Entire thing is equity share capital, 2,70,000. PC to preference shareholders, 10% preference share capital, 90,000. In addition to this, there is some liquidation expenses being paid or amalgamation expenses you can say to the extent of 30,000. Total PC totals up to 3,90,000. Discharge to debentures twelve percent debentures of Y Limited will be paid off at eight percent premium by issue of twelve percent debentures in X at a discount of ten percent. Check how much is twelve percent debentures in Y? Twelve percent debentures in Y is one lakh fifty thousand. This 1,50,000 is being repaid at a premium of 8%. 12% debentures in Y. 
add premium at the rate of 8% 12,000 discharge to debenture holders One lakh sixty-two thousand issue price per debenture in X. How is it is issuing? He is issuing it at a discount of ten percent. Let me assume that hundred rupees is the face value. Then this will be ninety. Number of debentures issued is eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred debentures are issued at ninety rupees. The ten rupees is discount on issue of debentures. They are asking us the balance sheet directly. Identify the nature of amalgamation first. The first sentence itself there is a revaluation given. Once I identify the revaluations. Then it means the nature of amalgamation is purchase. Is directly asking us the balance sheet. So the next working note, if we have identified that is a purchase method, is goodwill or capital is a continue identifying. Start with your assets. Fix the assets. Y limited fixed assets are 2,50. Fixed assets are revalued upward by 15%. 15% above book value is 2,87,500. Stock adjustment is there. Stock and data are taken over at 10, 5% less. So this is 3,4,000. 3,20 minus 5% is 16,000. Let us 1,90 minus 5%, 1,80,500. Well, there is no change for bills receivable. Bills receivable 20,000. But unfortunate or fortunate, your bank will change. Why should it change? Because of that statement given after the stock and debtors, both the companies have agreed to pay 10% equity dividend. If he is paying 10% equity dividend, what was his bank balance before? His bank balance was 40,000 minus 10% dividend on their share capital, 3 lakh share capital, 30,000 dividend paid. Preference dividend already paid, I don't have to deduct. But even X Limited is paying the dividend. So X Limited shares are held by Y Limited. How many shares do they hold? 5000 shares. So even if, y, if X Limited is paying dividend, Y Limited should receive the dividend plus 5000. Bank balance total is 15. Outside liabilities, twenty-eight 
12% debentures. What is the discharge to debenture holders? 1,62,000. Debenture holders. 1,62,000. Creditors. Same value. 1,25,000. And finally, bills payable, Check the accuracy of your workings guys. If you have completed till here then go for the balance sheet. Complete the balance sheet.
equity share capital of X is 6 lakhs plus 2 lakhs 70, 8 lakhs 70. Then 12% preference share capital, 10% preference share capital already existing, 2 lakhs plus 90,000. Reserves and surplus. First one is a capital reserve that we got. We just identified the capital reserve as one lakh five thousand. Then come to the reserves and surplus. Other reserves which are given in the balance sheet. Basically, the reserve given to me in the balance sheet is three lakhs. Out of this, I declared a dividend on six lakhs capital. I paid sixty thousand as a dividend plus. I received again from Y for those 6,000 shares, again 6,000 rupees. Net, my amount is 2,46,000 rupees. This is 60,000 is dividend paid, 10% of the share capital, plus 6,000 rupees dividend received from Y Limited. One second guys, uh, one more will come up, A discount on issue. Discount on issue of debentures, negative reserve. How many debentures were issued? 1800 debentures, each one had a discount of 10, 18,000. That's it for the reserves and surplus. Yep, a revaluation reserve compulsory because even the, he said revaluation is for both the companies. So revalue even your fixed assets of X, 15%, 1,5,000. 7,lakhs into 15%. Plus 15%. Non-current liabilities. Twelve percent debentures. Eighteen eighteen hundred debentures, one lakh eighty thousand debentures. Add it to two lakh rupees. Three lakh eighty thousand is my total debentures. Current liabilities. Credit us, deduct that thirty thousand, uh, deduct that ten thousand rupees intercompany owings. Two lakh twenty plus one lakh twenty five is three lakh forty five minus ten thousand three lakh thirty five. No change as far as your bills is concerned. Bills payable is fifty five thousand only. Assets, non current assets, tangible fixed assets, both the assets were revalued by fifteen percent. So seven lakh became eight lakh five, and two lakh fifty thousand became. Two lakh eighty seven thousand five hundred. There's ten lakhs ninety two five hundred. Continue for the next one. That's it for your non-current assets. Go for the current assets. First current asset is stock. 2,40,000 existing stock plus 3,4,000 taken over. 
5,44,000 stock. Debtors reduce it by the intercompany owings of 10,000. 3,60 plus 1,90 is 5,50. Now it is 5,40 after reducing the 10. Bank. Oh, I'm sorry. This guys is a revaluation here. 360 plus 180,500. 540,500. Now 10,000 intercompany owings. 530,500. Bank. Bank of X is 110. Minus 60,000 rupees dividend paid. Plus 6,000 rupees dividend received from Y. Plus Y's bank after all these adjustments taken over is 15,000. I think bank is 71. Oh, liquidation expenses minus 30. Bank balance is 41,000 then. Bills receivable, I forgot this amount. 80,000. Guys, this was PC to outside shareholders. I hold my investments. We forgot this part. We need to cancel our investments also. Investments in Y, 80,000. My total PC is a total of this. Some shares held in Y for 80,000 and outside shareholders I paid 3,90,000. My total PC is 4,70,000. Comparing this, I get a capital reserve but it's only 25, not the 1,5,000. Now check your balance sheet totals, just a tally, we have completely ignored that guys, we have carried away with the adjustments.
बैलेंस शीट टोटल इज टू टू एट एट ट्रिपल जीरो ट्वेंटी टू लैख एटी एट थाउजेंड 